Welcome back, Karate Connection. This is an adult karate class. Uh, this is designed for KCMMA and Team Highstown members. This is a review for stuff that we already learned. And there might be a few things in there that are brand new for you. Uh, today is basics and basic technical grappling. So hopefully you have your grappling dummy that you made. If you don't, you're going to need to go back and make yourself one because we're going to be doing techniques using a grappling dummy. I had a video I posted on earlier on the Facebook page telling you how to do it. And we've done this many times on YouTube on our station. So to make sure, forget, don't forget to have your Uncle Bob or Uncle Billy, one of your grappling dummy friends there. Okay, you're going to need that. It only takes you like, you know, four to seven minutes to make it depending on how quick you do stuff. So you can go back and watch it. It's also on YouTube. But again, it's on the timeline. You can go right down. It should be just like maybe five videos down. You'll see it, how to make a grappling dummy. So Wednesday, we'll be doing grappling techniques and basics again. So we're going to do a little different type of warm-up this time. We're going to do kind of what we call a mixture warm-up. We're not going to do so much calisthenics. But we're going to do more technique today. So all of our warm-up is going to be technique-related. We're going to start out with hands in this position called the steering wheel, 10 and 2, and we're going to swing our hands and our foot. This is a grappling foot sweep that I'm going to have you do for a warm-up today, just something a little different, so that as we're moving, our body is doing something that we can apply for. Good, nice. Nice, there you go, good. Excellent. All right, good. So we have the basic down. Okay. Now, if you heard a little scratch noise, like that's the side of my foot scraping the floor. Okay, rub it against the floor, just basically traveling across it lightly. Next one, we step back, turn, and do it. Okay, step back, ten and two, rotate. Ten and two, rotate. Step back, nice. Step back. Nice. Step back. Nice. Good. Now let's go to the other side. Step back. Good. Step back. Nice. Step back. Step back. Good. Step back. Good. Step back. Good. Nice. So those are just a couple of little warm ups with our legs that we can do. Uh, that is a step back foot sweep. You can also do what we call two steps back sweep. So watch, I step back one, same leg. I rotate again, and I sweep. So that's our next one. So we go one, two, okay? Now I wanna get those hands involved too, okay, ready? One, we're pulling them, two, okay? Let's do it again, one, Good. Now let's try the other side, all right? Let's try the other side. So we step, hands are 10 and 2, okay? Step back, pull, one, I'm pulling. Now we're going to turn this way with our hands, and then there it is, okay? So step one, same leg step, and throw. Okay? Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of circling my body. I'm in a little circle. If you watch it, I'm going to go slow again. I'm gonna get on this side so you can see the exaggeration of the circle motion, okay? Stepping back with the first one, and then I'm gonna step back at an angle. And it looks like I'm almost creating a circle in this throw, okay? So as I'm pulling, I'm going one. Now watch the exaggeration motion, okay? So that's another way to set this up. If they pushed you, you could let them push you. You step back. Then you step and drag them. You drag and pop that foot and turn the hands, either side you're working on, okay? So it's a nice little foot warm up. Another one is what we do is the side step. We step, one, two. Instead of just going sweep, see that? That's what we did in the very first one. We just sweep with the hands, remember? That was the very first move. Now we're gonna do step, sweep, okay? Side step, sweep. Sidestep, sweep. Now let's do the other side. Remember, we just did this. That's all we did. Now we step and sweep. Now, 
when you do this with your partner, you don't want them totally cooperating 100%. Because if they step before you step, it defeats the purpose. You want to step and pull them and then help kick back. Okay. That's one of the tricks in judo is that you get the timing. These are simple sweeps that are very hard to apply. And what I mean very hard to apply is because we overthink it and don't do the most important thing, which is understanding timing. Uh, if you look at timing as in a stand up, you got to say to yourself, hey, if I don't time the right time to punch, I get hit or I'm too far away at range, okay? So again, let's try this again. So I step and sweep, good. This helps our stand up, okay? Step and sweep, nice. Step, sweep. Step, sweep, good, good, good. So I just wanted to do a little different type of warm up. I'm still gonna do a few jumping jacks and stuff like that, but I just wanted to give you a little kind of a stand up warm up with judo, okay? All right, 20 jumping jacks, go. H, ni, san, shi, go, rok, si, hash, ku, ju. All right, have a seat. Let's do 30 leg pushes. And again, we already kind of warmed up a little bit, just a little extra, okay? 30 of these, seven, eight, nine, ju. Ju each, ju ni, ju san, ju si, ju go, ju si, ju hash, ju ku, ni ju, ni ju each, ni ju ni, ni ju san, ni ju si, ni ju go, ju rok, ni si, ni ju hash, Jiku, Sanju out, right, stick one leg out. Just wanted to get the body warmed up a little. A little different flare on that. Touch those toes. Good. Other side. Touch those toes. Let's do a 10 count. Each knee. San, Shi, Go, Rok, Si, Shi, Ash, Ku, Ju. All right. Butterfly, guys and girls. Hopefully Kathy's watching. If you're not watching live, hope you guys are watching the replays of this. Nick, Joe, Jim, Bob, Tim, Craig, <laughs> throwing people under the bus, Lucas. <laughs> and push him down. Nick, legs out straight. Stretch down. Good. Shake him out. All right, stand up. Slap your back. So I've been doing a bunch of classes, so I don't really feel like I have to warm up as much, which is kind of a disadvantage, because if you're coming in fresh, you may need to warm up a little more. All right, roll your neck. Good, so we have basics and basic grappling techniques, okay? We're gonna do what we, some of the things that we transition from karate right to grappling basics. Uh, I'm gonna teach you a X choke in a few seconds, and with that X choke is the X block. Now, they go hand in hand. Once you learn one, they're done the same exact idea, okay? So don't forget that. We're gonna start with the basic X. Everybody's like, ah, oh, I never use this. Well, X's are all over, and they're great for grappling X chokes. Easy to get a hold of. You get a hold of someone's gi, you got that set up for your X choke, okay? So first move is put a leg out, put a leg back, doesn't matter which one you have. You can do it open, close. Going two up, two down. Two down, two up. Nice. Now, can I do the X this way? Yes. X can be this way or closed. Now, if you go back, where does that come from? Godan. Okay? This motion. It's an akata. Okay? That same motion you apply in grappling. So, I'm going to take that technique, apply it to a grappling move now. So, hopefully you have your dummy with you. And then I'll come back and do some more basics again. So we're going to start out with our friend here, Billy. Okay, so I put him in my guard. Okay, I'm going to kind of hold him up for us here. Hand one, inside up towards his ear. Importance of this, your thumb wants to be up by his ear. If I'm grabbing, my hand is up by his ear. See that? Right up by my ear there. The other one can go over top or underneath. And I pull in and then down. Four, in, out. Don't go this way first. Okay, now I'm gonna give you another angle. This is important to understand. I'm gonna do this without the dummy first, okay? Without the dummy first. Let me see the hand position, okay? One, two. He's right by his ears. If I do it wrong and I pull my elbows out, 
I went from six inches to 12 inches of space I gotta travel to get that to choke. If I'm here at six inches and I pull into me, look how my hands are already getting closer. They went from six to four to three. Now I pull out and we're at zero. Okay, very simple. What's neat about this choke I like so much is that if I put this hand up here and for some reason I can't get this one in here, I can go over like this. Okay, or if I wrap this hand wrong by his ear, I can still go here or here. Lots of options, okay? So for instance, let's take the dummy. I've got my hand where I want it here by the ear. The dummy, Billy here, brings his hand up to block me. I can't get my hand underneath here. He's blocking it. I come over the top, grab by his, on his shoulder by his ear, pull down and in and then out. So I'm here, here, in, or down, out. So don't miss that. That's, this, is, this is what I like about this choke. It's so easy because we don't think about it. Now, so as soon as I grab like this, my partner, he's in red alert. If he's in red alert, his hand will be up here, <laughs> okay? <laughs> if he's blocking my hand from reaching that way like this, take the other hand, reach over here and grab this. And then come back here and grab this, okay? So it's there if he's leaning forward at all, it's there. If he's sitting very straight, great posture, you can't reach him. Because he's holding your stomach down, you can't reach him. If he's leaning forward like this, he's asking you to gently choke him. If you want to call it gentle, okay? Jiu-jitsu the gentle way, okay, get the idea? All right, so there it is. Key, ear, key, ear, pull down, in, out, boom. Now remember, the thing that can go wrong is if you don't go deep enough. If I grab way down here, you can see way down by his chest, this is not gonna be a super choke. Not gonna be a great choke to use, okay? So, rule one, up by the ear, okay? See by the ear there? I'll make sure you can see it. I can even grab this side like that. Then I can come underneath with the other one, okay? Or I can come over top and pull down and out. These are mean moves when you get a hold of that gi. All right, so that's our basic technique on X choke to X block to X choke. So don't forget that, real easy stuff to do. So I'm gonna work on that basic for you there, how to apply it from karate to grappling. And it all comes from that motion in those katas. You already know it, you just don't think about it when you do the katas here, okay? There's all, I told you forever, there's grappling in kata. People just don't get it until the instructor says, this is what you're doing. And a lot of instructors don't know, and that's bad. Um, and again, not everybody's the best doctor, so you, you look around to find that best instructor, and that's life. Um, part of the game. All right, so let's get back to some more basic stuff. Um, a lot of times in basic karate, we want to make sure that you have good kicks. Different types of kicks. There's front snap kicks, there's front thrust kick, there's a front heel kick. Different versions of it, okay? High recommendation streetwise, basically you want to kick fast. Fast. Even if it's not super hard, you want to be fast. If it's hard and slow, boom! and they grab your leg, they drag you across the floor, you're on the ground being dragged across concrete, not cool. If somebody's kicking fast, it's harder to what? Grab. Think about it, fast bees, hummingbirds. Try to catch a hummingbird, be pretty impressive. <laughs> they are fast, not really painful. If they were to hit you and peck you a little bit, compared to like an eagle hitting you with talons, Okay, but again, they're fast. So let's think of speed. So you wanna have that speed for basic. So when I'm kicking, I wanna and back, okay? That's just a normal, so you can see it, speed. But you wanna be fast, kinda of like, almost like, would you jab slow at somebody in your spar? Would you jab? Not that slow, you jab fast. You, you get it out there, you pop it out quick. 
Why you don't want them to grab it? Same thing kicking. Same thing grappling. Sometimes slow, then fast. Sometimes slow, fast. Same thing sparring. Sometimes you're sparring, basics, sparring. Set them up with that. Next time, fake them out, do the hand, right? So you want to work on those things, okay? Think of that kick as being like a jab. It has to go out fast. Now, part of that power in that is the speed helps intensify the power. Because you have to make your leg work harder to kick faster and to drive it through more, okay? The problem is most people, when they strike with speed, they don't emphasize the ending of the technique. They're thinking speed, speed, speed like that, okay? Let me see if I can, they just pop it out, okay? But they don't think about the impact at the very end where they should have that little bit of power. The last three to six inches. It's kind of a Bruce Lee JKD theory that you know we kind of do a little JKD here, honoring Bruce Lee. So that's what part of our system. He had that quick little, little motion right at the end, at the end of that power. It was all that speed and then it was that power right at the end, that little snap, okay? That's how you got that one inch punch. You know, that was all that power at the very end of the technique. I don't recommend practicing. I don't, I don't recommend doing a one inch punch in a fight, but again, it, he was very effective with stuff like this, okay? It takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication to do that, but again, something to think about. So I want you guys and girls to practice your kicks with speed. Now, if you're kicking fast and something hurts, what do you do? Slow down, take it easy, don't overdo it, okay? So you, fix, you find that speed. Now, side kick, same thing. Technically, a side kick is a side thrust kick, a side snap kick, and so forth, okay? So, you don't wanna just go, you wanna make that snap fast, way faster than that. I'm just showing you, that is what's gonna grab them, grab your leg and drag you again. You want that speed, speed. Now, what makes a motion not easy to see in basics? Constant motion. If I stand still and I punch, even if I punch fast, you're like, oh, that was pretty fast. But you could see it. Does that make sense? So think about this. If I'm standing here and I go to punch, and I'm just going to do a mediocre punch, okay? All right. You saw me move. If I'm moving, you didn't see it happen. I was already moving. Does that make sense? So that constant motion, and then all of a sudden it fires. Think about that when you're sparring in class. Think about that when you're grappling. I'm moving, I'm moving, and then boom, I grab the move, okay? Moving, I'm moving, and then boom. If I go from dead zero and try to gain all that power, you got a car outside. It's a big race car. And they hit the gas, and it starts spinning, it starts making all that noise. They're wasting a lot of energy to get any forward motion. Make sense? Think about it. Watch NASCAR, not NASCAR, but watch the drag strip idea, all right? The ones that don't spin as much, they're grabbing and getting that grip, and that power is being shoved forward. That's what you want for your basic techniques, okay? So think about those things. Practice the speed, think about moving, and then boom, while you're moving, then strike, okay? So basics are good to have fun with, all right? Uh, you guys and girls that are practicing, I want you to do your kata this week. Just practice it with kata. Think about when you're kicking in kata. Think of somebody being in front of you. You know, and you're doing, you know, block, punch, punch, and kick you don't go. Ask yourself, did that kick hurt somebody? And if you say, nah, it wouldn't hurt anybody, then why are you doing it? Put some speed into it, put some effort into it. Emphasize that, okay? Very important. All right, so now, I've been gabbing already again. Let's go to some more basic grappling. Um, another guard I like, this is my preference, is a guard called Spider Guard. A lot of times you start in guard, and now what I do a lot of times in this guard position is I like to get my legs to do some work for me, uh, especially in our highest end grappling system. You know, we do lock our legs a little around people, but most of us are what we call open guard. This is open guard, like this, okay? Now, that's so easy to drag that foot up here and place it right up into a partial spider. So I'm gonna turn a little bit so you can see it. Now, you wanna grab wrist. I'm just grabbing the gi right now, but if I had a gi and grab a gi or wrist, 
I get one up here. Now he's still on his knees right now, okay? So I can take this and put both in each armpit. That's a different version of spider. I can also take my shin, put it into where his arm bends. All right, now if I take my weight and drive that way, he's falling over that way. So I'm taking my right, I'm pulling, and I'm kicking. So I'm pulling and I'm pushing. I'm doing both directions, okay? I can do it on the other side. All right, I take that, put my shin into his arm, push that up, I'm pushing up with the top one, and I'm pulling down with the bottom. So I'm pushing and pulling. That makes them roll. Now, can you do this without gi? Yes, you can. You grab his wrist. Remember? Wrist. Wrist. I'm holding his gi, but you grab his wrist, okay? And a good way to start to get there is you're in your guard, and you're up here. Got that open guard. Come on up. Get your feet out of his hips. Walk up right there. There's your first entry of it. Get into his armpit. If you can get into his armpit and hold the wrist, that's very uncomfortable. I've seen a few people submit from it, which is a laugh, but there are a few that hurts that much. Most people just cooperate. Okay, so here, push. Next one, you can go right here or pull right in like that. Or switch it. Okay? Now, this foot can go here and drive or you can go right down to your foot, onto his knee down here, push his knee out, and ride him right over. And now you can go into mount, or you can go to an armbar here, or any position you're in, you can go right to the side, it's up to you. Okay, so one more time, you got your dummy, and your spider, push the leg out, rotate over, come right up, now you're right into an armbar, if you want, or whatever move you wanna do. Thanks for tuning in, glad to see everybody. Still healthy out there. I haven't heard any bad negative anything about anyone. That's awesome to hear. I'm glad everybody's hanging in there. And again, this video is intended for Karate Connection, MMA, and Team Highestown members. So I can't wait to see you guys just socialize and get you back in here rolling around and having fun. All right, cheat. All right. Have a great night. Uh, good evening. It's Kombanwa for Japanese. Jama Tata, which means see you later. Sayonara is forever, but it's not forever here. Have a great one. Bye-bye.